Okay, that's very weird. New game. So, uh, because this is a DS version, basically I wanted to make sure that it worked. Uh, number of different chapters. The left button is not bound for some reason. View config. I own this game, so I'm not really that like sheepish about um, admitting that I'm uh, using an emulator. There we go. So different episodes, each one of them is based around a certain court case and a certain uh, like story. It looks a bit different on my end, obviously, because I have the top and bottom uh, screen it's for me it's stacked on top of each other so it looks like a complete image however you'll it'll be like pretty apparent once we actually get into the game like why the screen is like this um normally things are happening on the top side of the screen bottom half of the screen not so much and that's because it was originally a game boy advance game so the game boy advance obviously doesn't have two screens just as one and uh for the ds re-release port i don't know i guess port is is a better way of putting it they basically said, okay, well, we're going to put in some touch screen stuff. It's not going to be necessary. So for me, I can like click on these things as if I was tapping on the stylus um, on the DS. Or I can just use a controller, which I'm probably going to use a controller. So we're going to play the first turnabout. First turnabout is the first case of the game. So you'll notice that, see, like I said, text boxes and like the graphics and everything like that are going to stay on the first screen and the second screen is mainly just used for menus used for that kind of stuff damn it why me i can't get caught not like this not like this gotta find someone to pin this on what i like about the ace attorney game is or the games is they show you the murderer in a lot of cases or at least this first case i don't remember if they do it for the other ones but at least for this first one, because I've played the, I've played this one specifically a lot. Um, they show you the murderer, and then you kind of got to work backwards. It's less about the court drama of, or it's less about the drama of like finding things out in the court, and it's more about trying to work your way backwards. Boy, am I nervous? Right. This is me, Fe. She's the best. Oh hi, Chief. Glad I made it on time. I'm gonna try to both not skip as much as I can and also wait. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. I think. You mean you knew the defendant before the case? Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. So the localization for these games is always really good, too. I really want to help with myself. It's over. My life. Everything. It's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. He sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. So, my name is Phoenix. I am a lawyer. This is Larry. Larry Butts. Tell him I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. Finished. Can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who took her away from me? Who did this? The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a very simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was on Lucky Sab dating her. Larry Butts. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Grade school? Can't talk. When something smells, it's usually the butts. 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He doesn't act for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, is it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart and that I own one, which is why I took this case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. Courtroom number two. 
So yeah, I took a, um, I found a, a later version of the game and then found the court. Uh, oh, my layers are out of order. Um, yeah, I found courtroom in later games, and yeah, that's what I'm using for this background. Court is now in session with the trial of Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. I want to just make sure my volume is okay. It's ready, Your Honor. I can't tell. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor, I'm a little nervous. Conduct during the trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. Hope you can control your nerves. In most cases, I think the, um... Oh god, the test has ascertain your readiness. Few simple questions. Please state the name of the defendant. It's Larry Butts. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. What is the victim's name? I don't I know this one. I've read the case report cover to cover. It's wait. Uh oh. No way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? Look, the, defense, the defendant's name is in the court record. So the court record is a button you can see on the bottom screen. Remember to check it off, then do it for me. I'm begging you. So it's Cindy Stone, but basically the attorney's badge is, you know, is never something that we really need to bring up. The autopsy report, um, Cindy's autopsy report, loss of blood due to blunt, blunt trauma, blunt trauma, excuse me. But Cindy Stone is the uh, victim in the case, a model she lived back in the apartment by herself. And there's Larry Butts, the defendant. So it's Cindy Stone. So it's Cinder, Cinder, <laughs> Cinder Block. It's the cause of death. She died because it was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. You've answered all my questions. You seem much more relaxed. Good for you. I don't feel relaxed. First question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. The victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added to the trial. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in the court. Touch the court record and check out things. Regularly. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. Poggy's Phoenix, right, exactly. You don't want to mix, miss any information that might help in the uh, your client's case. Also, hi, Toki. You can see my green screen. It's, I love it. Um, you'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Larry gets excited easy. This could be bad. Are you only playing the first case? Now I'm playing as, as, as much as I feel like today. I don't, I don't really have like a time limit or anything like that. Yeah, man. If I... I can't reach it. But, what's it called? I've got... There's my camera. If I can hide the... Uh, oops. Hide the desk. And... Camera and desk. Yeah, just shows up as, as a black void now. Uh, camera background? There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play as much as I feel like it today. I really think that the first case is gonna be, uh, pretty simple. Mostly just because I played it before. I played this entire game before, but I haven't played it in, like, ten years. I played, like, the first case, or maybe the first two cases. Um, but I, the first one I, I know is gonna be pretty, um, chill. Mostly just because, like, I already know it. The second, from the second one onwards, I have, I don't remember anything besides like some characters and that kind of stuff. She just returned from overseas with one of them to do the murder. One of them? Lies, all lies. I don't believe a word of it. The victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris the day before she died. Indeed, she appears to have murdered or returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The so model didn't have a large income. She appeared that she had several sugar daddies. Streamer. Is my audio balance, like, bad? By the way, Toki, I can't, like, listen very well. 
Older men who gave her money and gifts, she took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to ask, answer that question. Has a way of running his mouth all in the wrong direction. Should I stop him from answering? My client has no idea the victim was seeing other men. The question is relevant to the case. Oof, wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That's cheating she dog. Cheating bitch. Um, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop die. When I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial. I love the judges just like, all right. Let's just, this is a circus already. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Did you or did you not? Well, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't. Look at that smug bastard. Look at that smug face. What do I do? Have an answer honestly. Tell the truth. Or, yeah, I was there, I went. Dude, chill, she wasn't home, so I didn't see her. The defendant is lying. The prosecution would like to call a witness who proves Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. The man who found the body just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Mr. Payne, excuse me. Call the witness. This is bad. My witness was selling newspapers in the victim's building. Mr. Frank saw it. Get it? Saw it. There's a lot of puns in this game. There's also a lot of, like, good sprite work and dithering and stuff like that. Like, you can see in the wood behind the prosecutor, all those little dots to, like, blend in a shadow and colors. You sell newspapers. Newspapers, yes. You proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw in the day of the murder. I was going to door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright, found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby phone and found a, or a park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without doubt, the defendant. So this game is actually like a parody of the Japanese legal system because like apparently it's very difficult to get an acquittal in Japanese court. So part of the parody of this game is that like one witness, they're just like, yep, that's it. Aren't phones supposed to be working in a blackout? However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone used was one of those. I have a record of the blackout. So there was a blackout. Now, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. So we're going to look at the blackout record. Electricity the building was out from noon to six in her building on the day of the crime. Victim arrived home a day before the murder. Statue of the Thinker, it's rather heavy. So we don't really have any of the details that kind of let us beat this case yet. What am I exactly am I supposed to do? You expose the lies. Your client is innocent, and the witness must have lied in the te or testimony, or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in your evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence in the hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. Find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you've found contradicting evidence, you present it. So basically, you just kind of... You read, again, the testimony that he just gave. And then I basically compress it every time. So. Oh god. Hold it. It doesn't work. Never mind. So. Does it. Okay, I actually have to like press this. Okay. So this is going to door to door. So you can press it at no consequence. Um, isn't the man leaving a permanent common site? I find it odd you would take, not no you take notice of it. Her. Hey. I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and frightened at the same time, just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requested the witness refrain from conjecture. Good work, Phoenix. 
Saw him, and that looks suspicious. So what happened next? So you can press at any at any of these like points, and you don't get any kind of consequences for doing anything wrong. The only time you get consequences, and you can see these exclamation marks there are lives, um, is when we present things to contradict them. So if I'm wrong, I lose one of those exclamation points. I thought he must be in a hurry because he looked like because he left the door half open behind him. Half open, I say. Yes, yes, the door was open half open. I watched it for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd, in a big city like this, I thought. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Why did you look inside the apartment? What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door's half open. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they're there. It's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone would have looked inside. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So he looked inside the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. Are you sure she was dead? Well, I guess, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all. There was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no, nothing. I thought to call the police. And... You, you, you want to press everything. You thought to call the police. Doesn't mean you didn't actually call them. Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. Sometimes it's just like, literally one thing where they're just like, yeah, that statement was nothing. Just read the next one. Uh, phone department wasn't working. You say that you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entryway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. That phone wasn't working. Went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone, and being in the middle of the afternoon, there's no answer for the other apartments. So the time of death was... So here's, here's the thing. Time of death was 4 to 5 p.m. They said it was the middle of the afternoon. So yeah, I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Time of death, 7.31, 4 to 5 p.m. Cause of death. So because it was 1 p.m., because the time of death is 4 to 5, we can present it. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death is sometimes after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. Can you explain this three-hour gap? So, Mr. Payne, this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that very hard to believe. Why are you so certain that he found the body at 1pm? I, er, well, I, uh, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, way to put him on the spot. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. So that's basically the point of the game, is you're trying to find evidence that is going to break through, you know, lies. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying that the time, it was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Okay, that's a lot of bullshit. I don't want to say a lot of bullshit, but it's just like... There's, there's a lot of ways to poke holes in that. I've got this one. The first case of every game is supposed to be kind of a pushover just to get you in the in the mood. You said heard, not saw. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, at least in my watch. Isn't that a little strange? You're saying that you heard something, but if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. The witness did say he actually heard something at the time. It's ludicrous to suggest you wouldn't hear anything. There's a voice saying the time was probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. I can't put my finger on but something feels fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witnesses testified he heard the time. Okay, so with Mia telling us that, I want to just like... 
4 to 5 p.m. It's fine. Statue of the Thinker. That's the, like, this is the key to the case, but we can't, like, what is a key about the case isn't present in this evidence at the moment. Apparently arrived home. Oh yeah, electricity was back. She can't have been, she can't have been, uh, electricity was out. Probably coming from the television. We gotta save the blackout record because there was no power from noon to six. This record proves it. You couldn't have heard the television or the video. Dun dun dun. Defense has a point. Do you have an explanation? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. The court prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Must have been the shock of finding the body. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. Must have been what I saw. Wait, the murder weapon isn't... You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. I'm really sorry. I only remember the table clock. Table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first time I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. He's the, the victim. The murder weapon? Yeah, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I said. Did you might doze off in the middle of the testimony? Something's fishy here. Okay, so we're gonna go back. Murder weapon. We're gonna present. And then we're gonna present the statue. Um, because we don't know it's a clock. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was a statue. How is that supposed to be a clock? What? Your objections and your evidence. Who do you think you are? You know, the defense attorney? I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The next is just a switch. You can tilt it. and says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. So the murder weapon was a clock after all. It appears that the witness testimony is correct. It's a clock. I want to say yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the testimony. The only, weapon, the only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it by his hand. Yet the witness testified they never entered the apartment. He went into the apartment. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I was in here. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and then the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue. Mr. Saad, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable since the murder victim spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned in your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day? I never. Look, I, the clock, I mean, no. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and sh he should burn. Death, give me death. I like it because he threw it. Oh no, never mind. I was gonna say it would be cool if he threw it off the bottom of screen and it like hit hit his face. So this is this is a very common thing in every case is that you find like a key witness and then as you badger them and badger them and badger them, they go through a breakdown and the breakdown is like it changes their sprite, it changes their demeanor, that kind of stuff. You claim the sound came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think through this carefully. Examine the clock's batteries. Try sounding the clock. Ask the neighbors. Uh, we're gonna try sounding the clock. I think it's 8.25 p.m. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. 
Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is right now? It's 11.25, so this is here. This is key. This is nine hours off. As you can see, the clock, uh, the discrepancy between Mr. Saw and Heard and the actual time of death. So that's like four hours. I guess it's 11.35 p.m. Thinks it's 11.35 a or p.m. So it's like two plus th three hours. Uh-oh, what's he talking about? Well, it seems like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running th slow three hours on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have the case. Damn it, I was so close. Why, is, why am I giving up? We need one more piece of evidence and we know what it is. I mean, I cannot let you indict the witness. This sends the cross-examination of Frank Salad. I come all the way to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. The lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Wait. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can... Yeah, this is silly. Not so fast! Me is the best. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. The chief! It's over. Can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Yes, you can. You have the evidence. Doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason you don't have proof. Yes, I can. So the idea... Like, this this case is really simple. Like, we're almost done this case. Um, because... They give you all the evidence. You don't have to do any investigation. And... Um, basically, it's just a matter of presenting each evidence once. So we presented the autopsy report to say that... His timing was off. We presented this to note, say that there was a blackout, so there wasn't a TV playing. We found out it was a statue, so, we, you know, it doesn't sound automatically. So all that's left is the passport. And the passport says he was in Paris the day before. The time zone difference between Paris and Japan is going to be three hours. So that's the only one that's left. The victim has just returned from abroad the day before. The time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. there, it's 1 a.m. the next day. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sowett? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Terrible. Order in the court. Exactly. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, er, is arrested but taken away. Mr. Wright, I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Yeah, we, uh, we beat this in 40 minutes. Court finds the defense, Larry Butts, not guilty! Yay! And with that, the court is adjourned. So that's episode one. That's nothing. Like if I was just playing episode one today. Um, yeah, this would be a lot shorter. He poses a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house that day. When Larry went to the apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, he let him in to do his dirty work. When he searched the victim returned fluster, he grabbed the nearest blunt object and killed her. So here's the thing. That exposition, usually in other games or in other cases, you have to, like, find out that exposition itself. Still can't believe we won. Good job in there. Congratulations. I thought there was more to that case. I forgot how short it was. And it's kind of, like, it's kind of misleading because, like, in other cases, it's, like, multiple days. And it's multiple, like... Going back, getting more investigation, coming back, twists, that kind of stuff. Do you like my, my raccoon buddy? The raccoon ramen? Um, and it's one of those things where it's just like... It takes a lot more... Like I, for, like I said, I forgot how short that case was. It, it's pretty much meant to give the player a positive, like, win. Uh, if she's this glad, I imagine how Larry must feel. I do. What is the raccoon's name? This is the thing. Hold on. We're going to go back to the raccoon for a second. So the thing is, the the raccoon doesn't have a name. And the raccoon... And that's part of why it's good. 
I think anyway, like we've done a lot of like talking about the brand and stuff like that since I've joined the company and the raccoon doesn't have a name and it doesn't have a confirmed gender. So I think that's part of it is that you don't know too much about the raccoon. And because you don't know so much about the raccoon, um, it's easy to project onto. It's easy to basically like put yourself in the raccoon's shoes or like what he or she would, it, they, whatever would talk about, you know, it, we were talking about why the raccoon doesn't speak and why we don't speak through the raccoon. And part of that is because it's just like a participant. It isn't like active. It isn't talking to the user or the the customer through it, which I thought it was really cool. And it's a nice way of thinking about it. So in the future, we are probably actually going to be naming the raccoon. And what I said during the meeting um, about they were asking like for suggestions, whatever, um, I was like, okay, I still want it to be gender neutral and I still want it to be something that can apply um, like it, it doesn't give too much away from it. And they were talking about, you know, are we going to like have it speak or whatever? And I'm like, this is why it's chill. You know, it's chill because it doesn't talk and it's chill because it kind of just acts and you can project onto it. So I thought it was really cool. Um, they suggested the name Snacks and I was like, that was like one of the, the options we were throwing around and I just love it because Snacks the raccoon. Um, I'm a big fan of Snacks. Snacks are good. We're going to go back to Phoenix, right? I'm not going to change scenes too much, but... Snacks the rags! My life is over! You're supposed to be happy, what's wrong? Aw, oh, Nick, don't worry about me. Good, wait, no, I mean... Bad, 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 bad. You're innocent, the case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. She was a... She was a gold digger. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Harry Butts. You can see the headlines now, Harry Butts innocent. Hey, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take the murder weapon. A present for me? Pour moi? Wasn't this the evidence that... No, actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a momentum. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick and... Well, she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that make you want to cry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought a lot of you in her own way. Well, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. No, no, I'm not sympathizing, isn't that right? Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Ah, the clock? It's either the clock or the passport. Check this out. Proof positive that you weren't some chump. This is the clock you made for her. She took it to, with her while she traveled. She probably just needed a clock. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Yeah, that's probably going to get some airline fees. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. So that's case one. That's uh, That takes no time. You see the important of evidence now. Also, things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? I guess so. How about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to the innocent butts. To innocent butts. Speaking of Harry. It's Larry. You're saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Or part of that. At least you'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? I love Mia. Mia's great. She's also quite attractive. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be the center of another incident. My promise to t not to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. Case end. That's the end of the game. That's it. <laughs> So we're going to save up to the clear point. We don't really need to save. I'm, I'm, I'm playing on a, a ROM with everything unlocked. So uh, 